All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of Notary Coach and author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent, and uh, three other best-selling books as well about this amazing notary business that we work in. Now, uh, my co-host for TNT is Laura Buer, of course. She is teaching and hosting a networking or popping in other networking events. So I think she's skidding in sideways. I'll introduce her in just a moment. But our co-host today is Matt Miller from the California League of Independent Notaries. Thank you so much for stepping up, Matt. Can you introduce yourself? Thanks, Bill. My name is Matt Miller, president of the California League of Independent Notaries, also a busy notary here in the San Francisco Bay Area and co-author of the Apostille Agent Survival Guide. Happy to be here with you today to answer any questions I can. Um, so I'll pass it back to Bill. Yeah, thank you so much. You got a lot of expertise on today's call, including yourselves. Um, that's the real powerful power of a group like this too. So if you hear some questions that come up, if you've found some solutions, if you have some perspective to share, uh, please use the chat to share that throughout the call. Also use this opportunity to connect with your peers across the country. And I see so many people already doing it, uh, uh, saying hello and telling us where you're from. Keep that up. And if you see somebody in a state that you're interested in or nearby you, use the uh, private chat feature to connect directly and really turn this into a networking event as well. The way TNT works, I'm going to speak very slowly now so you can start raising your hands because I don't have a single hand up, but you're going to use the raise hand feature. It's like a call-in radio show, but we're on video. And then we're going to call on you. You tell us what state you're in ask your question directly and succinctly, and then mute out. And then Matt, myself, Laura, when she gets here, we will do our best to answer your question and give you some perspective on that. All right, let's do it. Yolanda, thank you so much for stepping up and raising your hand in California. I can see that already. How can we help today? Hello, um, I'm really excited about the mutual prospecting. Can we talk about that at all today? Heck yeah, we can. Okay, so I was on the call where uh, the couple, uh, Stephanie and um, her husband were talking to us about the, uh, the notaries, they were talking to the notaries. But the call ran really long, I had to get off. And so I didn't hear how we are supposed to refer people. Um, my first question is, I know we, when they log on to the webinar, they will put as a referral, they'll put our name. Do they need to put notary or any kind of designation on there so they'll know that it's us? So we'll get credit. Yeah, great, great question. So let me just, I'm gonna rewind a little bit because uh, the only people who know about this right now are uh, the certified notary trust delivery agents and NBB members. So we will roll this out. Uh, to a, a grander audience in, over the coming weeks, of course, but we, uh, we, we take care of our NBB members first and we gradually roll out. So what she's talking about is mutual prospecting. We have partnered with a, uh, an estate planning firm that can offer estate planning services in all 50 states. And they are willing to pay, they pay our trust delivery agents $250 per appointment. So if you're the notary and the trust delivery agent, I'm one of those, um, uh, trust deliveries, uh, that's the going fee. So you hear that range somewhere between $100 and $300, they pay $250. On top of that, they're willing to pay a, a marketing fee or a referral fee uh, for any of your referrals to their firm. So the way that that works is there's three different ways to refer. One is to use uh, the link, uh, which will uh, they can book directly a webinar that's held every Wednesday at 3 and 6 p.m. Pacific time, where they can just watch Estate Planning 101. So they can learn the difference between wills and trusts. They can talk to Stephanie and Mike, ask their questions. That's every single Wednesday. In order to register for that, uh, it's a special link that's linked to the notary community anyway, so they know it's a referral from a notary. Plus, they uh, have to put who invited them to the webinar. So your name will be in there you'll be part of that uh, network so they can track it. Plus, 
the way that a premier works and the reason that we're part of the reason that we're working with them is they're very relationship based. So it's not a technology company, right? So it's not just some cog in the wheel or number that gets assigned. They're kind of hoping that you participate a little bit more too. So there's communication, they'll contact you and say, hey, the documents are ready. How do you want to handle this? You want us to schedule it? You want to schedule it because you get to be the trust delivery agent. So there's a lot of that type of communication that will happen. The other way that you can um, connect them or introduce them to Premier is by automatically scheduling a one-on-one -on -one call because some people don't want the webinar experience, right? They want uh, just a private conversation. And you can book that directly with Stephanie and Mike. And it's the same way. So it'll ask who referred you to, the, to this uh, appointment and they can write in your name that way. And then finally, the uh, third way and the, my favorite way is a combination of both of those or one or the other is to make an introduction via email. So everybody's got contact information. It allows me to edify Premier. It allows me to edify my client. So and just match them up and just let them know, hey, here's why I think this would be a great fit. And here's a link that you can book directly with Stephanie if, or if you'd like, or you can just respond to this email, right? So they've got all the options kind of right there for them. So that's how that works. Okay. Um, and then I, I just want to get your uh, feedback on, I was thinking of doing this today. I have a, uh, an appointment at a hospital and the gentleman wants to get a power of attorney and a um, healthcare directive because he's having surgery. Yeah. So I was thinking of at the end of the appointment, um, asking him about if I could send him information for a living trust um, and let him know that I'm a, a trust delivery agent and that he might want to think about getting a living trust at some point. So do you think that's a good idea or not? You know, um, I, I love that you're thinking about this. And I think... Um, the way I'll say this is there's a there's a, a million roads to success, and there's also some things that we have to be really sensitive about, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm an advocate of is never soliciting at the table. So you don't want to necessarily pitch or sell additional services, um, and let. I won't even say unless it's better to do it just later. So yes, to your point, because you asked is it okay to send those later? And I think that would be totally appropriate. In fact, one of the main reasons, my favorite ways of doing this is to say, thank you for making this enjoyable or it's been a pleasure helping you. I love to stay in touch. Do you mind if I send you occasional emails? I have an amazing referral list or I have amazing referrals that can help out. And if you know specifically that they're looking for something, you could say that. And then you wrap up, you button up that appointment and then later on, you can send an email that just says, hey, I know I promised you uh, some contacts in this field or this field or that field. And then you can make an introduction that way. You just want to make sure that it's two completely separate things. So we don't slip down any slopes into soliciting or uh, what's interpreted as um, a, a relationship that doesn't really exist, right? You just want to keep them all compartmentalized that way. Okay. But there's absolutely, and there should be a blend for this, right? I know a lot of people get, um, I guess, fired up about the um, estate planning attorney or those types of the services, but take a broader perspective on it too, is this could be a plumber, this could be a housekeeper, this could be lawn service, it could be anything like that, right? Like at the closing table, it, or the signing table, it may not be appropriate, especially at a hospital, right? Or whatever situation we're in to just stop the signing and start giving contact information and getting sideways into any other type of conversation. So just focus on the job at hand, button that up, and then promise that you'll uh, follow up and send those that information they've requested later. So whether it is an estate planning firm, whether it is a landscaper or housekeeper, whatever service or restaurant that you love, just button it up and do it later. And that gives you clarity on it, you know, it keeps it all compartmentalized, but it also allows you to make the proper introduction the right way. You can go a little over the top with it. You can edify who needs to be edified. You can map it out. So those re new relationships, whatever they are, get off to, on the right foot. Helpful? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.
you're so welcome. And if you're part of the CNTDA program, that mutual or NBB, the mutual prospecting portal has already been uploaded. Premier Estate Planning is our first, uh, well, let's call it our pilot program in there. There will be more. It's very exciting. There's some cool stuff happening and there's all kinds of different things that we can do because in our role as a notary, we're a trusted professional. You've heard of the triangle of trust, you know, CPAs, attorneys, and wealth advisors. But I say there's a fourth, the fourth component, the quadrangle of trust, this cube of trust, the square of trust. I'm, I'm still working this part out. But the notary plays a critical role in all of this. It's the connector of all of those. We have those contacts. We talk to people every day that need those services. So if we really want to bring value to our network and our relationships, then we must have a solid referral list, people that we trust that we can refer to other people. And this is just a step into that. Thank you for bringing that up, Yolanda. Exciting. I'm sorry, I see some private messages and I apologize. I'm terrible at multitasking. So you might just have to raise your hand. Matt, how are we doing? Is there anything I missed? Uh, nothing in the general okay. chat so far. Okay, good. All right, uh, Joanne, how's it going? Good. How are you, Bill? I'm excellent. I know you're in Washington. Yes. How can we help today? Um, just wanted to get your feedback about um, bundling fees for general notary work. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you know, you may get I may get a power of attorney, but there's like, I don't know, four signatures on there. Um, but like bundling it for, OK, I'm going to price 85, whether it's one or four. Um, signatures so 85 travel fee plus the signatures kind of like real estate docs they're like bundled mm -hmm. like what are your thoughts on that yeah I, I like your thinking i see where you're going here so i think the first thing we have to say of course is that this could be state specific uh and some so some states are gonna be a little more flexible with this than others especially if they have a generous um travel fee. For instance, what you're describing in Illinois, I've seen happen quite a bit, right? Because they had a $1 notarization fee, but they had flexibility with their travel fee as long as both parties agreed to it. So a lot of times people will just say, here's my bundled fee that incorporates everything. And this is it for $58 or $85, whatever it is. So states like that might be a little more flexible. But in most cases, in most states, um, that might not be the case. You might be, uh, especially like with a, a power of attorney or a, a one-off estate planning type document, you um, are usually confined to whatever your state requirements are. So if you're allowed $10 per signature per, or per notary stamp, depending on what, how it's described in your fees, you might be limited. If it's two stamps, it's 20 bucks plus whatever your state allows for travel and whatever you've agreed to with your client. And that's, that's pretty much it. Where bundling uh, gets exciting is in the loan signing package, of course, because there's so many other duties that you're doing, right? It's not just about the notarization. You know, there's hundreds of pages sometimes you're collecting signatures on non-notarized pages, you're briefly describing or orchestrating the documents as Laura describes it, right? Uh, you might be, of course, the travel's usually included in that group too, you might be dropping off documents. So that's how the bundle fee comes about. It also happens under the estate planning umbrella, but in particular with trust delivery, because those are, you know, that could be 50 to 100 pages as well. You are orchestrating the documents. You're briefly describing them. You're gathering signatures on the non-notarized. You might even pro be providing witnesses. And then you might be scanning if the attorney or the hiring company requires the scan back on the signature pages or whatever it might be. You might be dropping off um, uh, deeds or whatever it might be. So that's how you can bundle uh, fees under the estate planning. And what's cool is whether it's a loan signing agent or a trust delivery agent, that type of bundling works in all 50 states. Was that helpful? Did I answer your question? Good. Matt, would, would you add anything to that conversation as well? 
Um, you know, the only thing I would consider is when you are working directly with a signer versus a hiring company, right? So a, a signing service or an escrow office or a title company or an estate planning law firm, you're look, working directly with the customer. You want to uh, make sure that you are itemizing all of your fees that make up whatever that bundle fee is on your receipt. Uh, because this is how notaries get into trouble uh, when they get audited, is if the signer says, well, I had three documents, but they charged me $300 for that. Uh, should you ever be audited, you're going to need to prove what your charges were made up were made up of. So that would be the only thing I would add to the conversation. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Great point. Melissa Leak in New Jersey. Welcome. How can we help today? Hi, Bill. I'm Melissa. Um, I'm very new at um, notary. I don't know um, all the things that I need to know to um, get started with um, building a business around maybe um, mobile or virtual notary. Um, so if you could help me and help uh, maybe me learn the ropes um, of how to get started, I'll be more than happy. Yeah. Well, first of all, welcome to the industry. This is uh, this business has completely changed my life. It's brought more joy, more income than I ever thought possible. Uh, and I love to share it. So I'm glad that you're here. So the first thing we usually recommend <clears throat> is join us on TNT and stay engaged with this type of call because you learn so much from some of the questions that are asked. Um, the second thing that I'm going to say is um, seek resources outside of your state mandated training and resources, right? Like it's important to know what you can do in your state. Um, so that's where the handbook, um, the laws, those uh, the legal primer from uh, the NNA is gonna be very helpful because you gotta learn how to actually do the work, but there's so much more to this that your state's not going to share with you. And this is where resources like um, uh, the Sign and Thrive book, several other books in the industry, the Beyond Loan Signings. If you're not a reader now, you will be by the time you're in year two or year three of this business, because there's so much information to read there. And I would love to hear uh, in the chat uh, any type of resources that you wish you would have known about as a first year notary, if you could type those into the chat for Melissa as well. The other thing, um, well, I have quite a fit, quite a bit that we could talk about for newbies, but I want to talk to Matt too, because Matt, you work with a lot of new notaries. You've talked them through. You've seen a lot of the growth over the last few years with notaries. What advice would you have for Melissa in growing her business? Yeah, a lot of the same, Bill. I definitely would check out all of the available resources to the independent notary that exists now that just did not exist even five years ago. So the different notary communities, Sign and Thrive is a great example. Um, uh, there's also uh, Notary Stars, another good example, Notary to Pro, um, Laura, Buer, uh, Laura Buer presents her library of different types of uh, specialty work. There's a lot of available information on YouTube. Uh, however, I will, you know, disclaim by saying you need to discern what information is reliable and what is not. Uh, so don't take all of that stuff to heart that you may see on Facebook or some of the other chat boards. But a lot of the notary specific websites like the CLIN website uh, shares notary specific marketing tips. Um, uh, a lot of the loan signing specific websites like uh, Notary Rotary and Notary Cafe and 123 Notary have a lot of reliable information as well. And then don't forget the National Notary Association. Yeah. Uh, they are a national resource and they may be able to offer you some insight uh, as well. Check out their blog. All of their articles are posted for decades and uh, there's a wealth of information there as well. So I think that the more information that you can gain in your first year, the better off you are, because particularly in this business, 
uh, knowledge really is power. Um, if you are a really good notary and you build that reputation in your area, it's going to bring business your way. And then over time, you will start to get more complicated, larger, more, more um, uh, prosperous jobs coming to you because you will be positioned as the expert in your area. So learn everything you can about this business. Don't try to uh, prevent yourself from being uh, boxed in by a particular sector of the business, like loan signings or just uh, general notary work. Um, you know, look at other things that might be lucrative in your area, like apostille facilitation or uh, fingerprinting, which is something the public often associates with notaries. Uh, so I think that learning the, as much as you can and getting as much exposure as you can in the first year will really benefit you in the long run if you are looking to make this a uh, long-term career opportunity. Awesome, Matt. Thank you so much for that. Melissa, I think that's some really good advice and I see it's still coming into the chat for you as well. And here's how I'll, and I'll, I'll button this up a little yeah. bit too. So if I had... Um, four or five pieces of advice for you. The first one would be to just recognize and honor the role that you play as a notary. We are the defenders of integrity, the last line of defense against mortgage theft or mortgage fraud and identity theft. So it's a, it is important. And when you recognize that it's important, then it makes it a lot easier to go crazy with the learning that Matt and I just talked about, right? Like you want to do a good job. So the second step is to become a great notary and learn everything that you can about that, what you can do in your particular state, and more importantly, what you cannot do in your state. And then have some fun with this too, because knowing all the rules and not having any customers isn't gonna serve you any good, right? So you've got to focus on client getting. And regardless of whether you choose to go online as a, as a remote online notary, or if you choose to be in person as a mobile notary, your customers are still going to come from the same place. They come from the same two places for everything. It's your online visibility and it's your ability to influence the relationships you have. That's your network, cultivating those types of relationships, two places. So practical advice would be to immediately start your Google business profile. Even if you don't have all the answers yet, if, even if you don't know exactly where you're going, you don't have to know all that yet, but you have to get in the arena. And right now the arena includes Google business profile. So get that going. You can optimize and figure it out as you go, but you have to get the basics of that. The third thing or fourth thing, wherever I'm at with that is cultivate or build relationships with your peers, just like you're doing here on TNT. Look for other notaries that are in New Jersey. Look for other notaries that are in Pennsylvania, New York, where you can uh, cross borders if you have commissions in those states. You're going to need people that you can lean on, not just here on TNT, but you're going to need a little bit of guidance. You're going to need a vent every now and then. You're going to need some help. And this amazing notary community can help you out with that. And then finally, don't spend too much time on notary events. You have to uh, combine that with client getting events too. So that might be networking meetings, chamber meetings. That might be going to attorney events. That might be going to the Alta uh, land title events, whatever it is that you want to focus on. And I'll wrap that up all up in a button of with clarity comes customers. So decide what you want your business to look like and build it. Is that helpful, Melissa? Yes, that was more than helpful. I appreciate all um, of the advice. And I took a couple of notes. Um, I wasn't able to capture everything that you said, but um, it sounds like I'm in a good place. So I'll, I'll try to do my best with um, being here. And um, I'm already in quite a few networks with real estate investors um, and others. So the clients, I'm sure, um, they'll be there and um, I just need to get myself more familiarized um, and educated here. So thank you so much. 
much. You're very welcome. Thanks for being here. And again, welcome to the industry. Luckily, you can catch the replay if you didn't get all those notes. And also you can save the chat conversation, which is now loaded for everybody. There's loaded with uh, all kinds of suggestions, advice, and resources in there. You can save that by hitting the, uh, the three dots still. Yes. The three dots on the very bottom, you can save the chat. You can wait to the end as well if you want to save it then. All right, this is awesome. Uh, Matt, do you have any announcements that you'd like to make? Uh, any cool things coming up? Sure, so uh, the Notary Family Picnic on September 3rd, hosted by Jeff Clark and the Notary Family uh, is being held in Santa Cruz on September 23rd. I will put the link to that in the chat in just a few moments. If you are in the West Coast area and would like to join us, please feel free to sign up for that. I will be there, Bill will be there, Laura will be there, and several others, so um, check that out. Also, the California League of Independent Notaries uh, next round table will be on September 7th at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is open to any notary in the country, and we not only talk about California issues, we talk about bills and legislation that are currently being considered or are, have already been passed across the country. So check that out. You, I will also put the link in the chat in a few moments where you can sign up for that and get a reminder, much like you do for TNT. Um, and off of top of mind, uh, let's see, oh, one more thing I have, which will be the next uh, not uh, Notary Successful Journey Clubhouse chat, which is, um, hosted by Laura Buers, uh, Sue Hope, um, myself, Katrina Caldwell, uh, will be held on August 22nd at 5 p.m. on the Clubhouse app. Stop by and join us. Uh, we will be talking about the Notary Successful Journey and uh, things that you can do to help um, advance your notary career. Melissa, you might want to join us for that. That's all I have off top of mind, Bill. What do you have on your going on your way? There's so much that is coming up. Uh, the, I'll just throw this out here. I never do this. I never tease about what's coming without having a way to take action, but I don't, I'm not ready for it. I haven't built the event pipeline yet, but on Friday at nine o'clock, we have a free training for all notaries uh, about cultivating deeper relationships. In fact, in particular about cultivating influence within your current network. Uh, so the first of a four part training will be Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So just pencil it out in your schedule. Of course, we'll do replays and all that good stuff. And tomorrow you'll get the email and the registration link for that. And then finally, on Thursday morning, and I noticed somebody mentioned uh, Jim Allen's um, marketing class. He does the Google business profile. He's also part of NBB as the faculty. And on Thursday, he starts his five-week intensive in NBB as well. So it's Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. for five Thursdays in a row for NBB members. If you haven't joined us yet, you are welcome to do so. This month is the cheapest month it will ever be again. It's at $58 a month. Cancel anytime and you can participate in that program. After that, September 1st, the price is going up, unfortunately. But it's just the way we have to do things to bring this much value. We've got 10 instructors that are part of the program, 11 online courses, 20 live teaching events every single month. So it's a ton of value. Plus, you get Notary Assist, accounting software as part of the subscription and so much more. So I posted that link. It's notarycoach.com forward slash NBB or just go to notarycoach.com if that's all you can remember. All the links are there for you. And we hope to see you in there. All right, let's move on. John, it's great to see you in California, I know. How can we help today? Good afternoon, Bill, um, and everyone. Um, do we treat junior and senior with the same amount of weight? What I mean by that is, if there's junior on the signature line, I know he has to have ID to prove that. But is it the same for senior? What a great question, John. I, I love this. And you're absolutely right. Juniors, like, you can't change that at all, right? He was born a junior. He stays a junior. It's got to be It's got to be there. Seniors, it's a little bit different because they weren't born a senior, right? So that's a little more flexible. And I wonder, Matt, do you want to touch on that at all? 
Sure. And this is a great question. I think this is probably where a lot of uh, deed fraud occurs. In fact, I know that it is. Mm -hmm. So when there's a suffix on a name, best practice would be that the signer some way, somehow proves to you that that is who they say they are. I know that their passport or driver's license or other government ID may not have senior because maybe they became a senior before they renewed for their next one or whatnot. But there's got to be some other way that you can prove that they are that person. So ask, start asking for what else do you have in your wallet? Do you have a credit card that has it on? Do you have any other credential, a business card, something that would have that indication of senior on it? And if, <clears throat> if that's not doable, then move on to your credible witnesses pr procedure. And of course, in California, that would be two people who do know the person to be who they say they are. Of course, they swear under oath to that and they um, will sign your journal and you get their ID information as well. So that's how I would handle it. Um, I would like to hear uh, Bill's procedure. The reason is because yeah. if senior is on the signature line, I thought that senior is just nothing on the ID. There's nothing. There's no uh, senior for, for a senior. For junior, yes, you have to have that on ID, but I thought senior was just absent. Not always. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Same with junior. You know, I've come across a situation where a signer is known as junior, but hasn't registered that on their state ID. So, you know, start asking for other forms of identification, other ways that they can prove to you that they are that um, particular delineation, junior or senior, or the third or fifth or whatever it is. Right. I love uh, asking Laura's question, what's in your wallet, right? Like, what do you have that supports this? And then ultimately on the senior side, uh, you're going to have to make the, the best decision for you. Thank you. Question. Yeah. And sometimes too, if we're talking loan signings, there might, you might be, you might have to get uh, lender approval too. All right. Great question, man. Great conversation topics. I feel like we've only answered three questions and we're 40 minutes in. Deanna, thanks for being here. No pressure, but we've had some great questions. <laughs> hey, so, so it's good to be here. Um, so I actually have a question for uh, Matt, or maybe you too, Bill, but um, because he's the one that's written the book with Judy, I'm, I'm working on some um, apostille, my uh, fee setting. I know you can't tell me what to charge. I'm just curious if you can give a little bit of guidance as far as like what to do when it comes to the additional document, you know, if it's more than one document, you know, one is easy to figure out. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, what's the saying? You know, take everything I can from them to take an opportunity for another document, you know, to charge them. But what is, is there a, a ratio or anything like that? Any kind of guidance you can give as far as that goes? Great question. Matt, what do you say? Sure, and thanks, Deanna, for uh, asking that question. And you're right. I think that there should be a deal for the second document um, because there, there are some additional costs with the second document, but certainly not as much as the first document, right? So typically, the second document can be shipped together. It can be submit for apostille together. Um, it can be... Uh, you know, if you're sitting with the person, you can notarize the second document, then you don't have to charge an additional travel fee, for example, for that, right? So, you know, I, I I'll publicly say what my rates are because anybody can go to my website and look. Um, so for me in California, uh, for me to become profitable on a single document, and this is return the returning the document to the customer domestically, uh, I charge 150, and that covers uh, my cost of the of the document getting there, getting apostilled, and getting back to them. It doesn't, however, co cover any notary fees or travel fees, so that's outside of that. 
But if you have a second document, say for example, you have a power of attorney for the wife and a power of attorney for the husband, the second document I charge half off. So it's $75. And that is because it's being shipped together, it's being submitted for apostille together, and it does reduce the cost for that second document, but there still are costs associated with that document that need to be covered. So that's how I handle it. But again, that's in my market area. So you need to figure out what costs are involved with the submission of that second document for Apostille and put together a rate that covers those costs and still gives you a little bit of profit. And keep in mind, that second document, if it's going with the first document, will not have all the same costs associated to the first document. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the great thing you bring up. So if I had two documents, like you said, two power of attorneys that were being submitted, I only need one cover sheet that goes to the Secretary of State. Right. Okay, and so there's only, that's only a, but would there be like in Arizona, it's $3. So would it be a $6 charge, one for each of those or one off of that goes on both of them? I believe uh, Arizona, like most states charge per document. So okay. there's still going to be, you know, you, you can, you'll still have to, give them money for that second apostille, but you bring up a great mm -hmm. point, which is you're only going to have to submit one cover sheet because you can list multiple documents on mm -hmm. the same cover sheet. Okay. And then another kind of follow-up question to that um, in my effort to make sure that I'm charging what the market bears in the area. Um, you know, it would be great if I could just call up anybody and say, hey, I'm a fellow apostille agent here in the area. And I'm I don't know, that's how I would receive I'm like, cool, how can I help you? But not everybody is like that. <laughs> no, they're not. So, uh, so what, what is a kind of a common scenario, maybe, and it, maybe anyone here that's listening from Arizona will know if it's me calling you if I have this question. <laughs> no, but um, what's, what's a, a good scenario to use if you're trying to, you know, find out from others what they are charging? Because they don't all put it on their website. Well, starts with what's easy. Uh, you know, if you can find what they're charging on the website, like a rate card, that's great. And then you can jot those numbers down. Uh, if you if they don't post on their website, then you could uh, try emailing them, introduce yourself as a fellow Apostille agent willing to help refer business and, you know, ask what they charge for their Apostilles. And uh, if that doesn't work, then you could try calling other Apostille agents as a uh, kind of like a cost analysis type project and uh, go that route and see what you can what you can find out. And then what I would suggest, and I do this yearly now, I, I kind of go around the web in my area and see what people are charging. I put it all into a spreadsheet and then I look at the average, I look at the high end, the low end, and then I try to pr price myself appropriately um, you know, considering my costs and such. So, you know, do yourself a little cost analysis, see what everyone else is charging, find out the best way you can, but always when you're approaching other people in the same business that you are looking to build, approach it as a collaborative effort, not a competitive effort, right? Like I would love to work with you to send you business when I can't handle it. And maybe I can help pick up business for you when you're on vacation or whatnot, because guess what, guys? We all ha uh, live lives, and there are times when we just can't be there. And we and I would like to have someone to refer business out to. So approach it that way, and I think you'll get a lot better response uh, than you, maybe you have. I like well, I haven't started yet, so that's great. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> that you. That's excellent advice, Matt. Thank you. And I, Deanna, because I know you're in NBB, I just want you to know that in NBB, um, there's a, an abundant thinking notary that you're surrounded with, right? So they tend to share information that way, and they're the perfect candidates for the types of relationship that Matt's talking about. So you can talk about and get familiar with it, what Arizona does. What I'll share with you, because I just happen to know so many of the Arizona notaries and the California notaries, is that Matt's pricing is very aligned with Arizona pricing as well, if that's helpful. Good. Cool. All right. Uh, Phil Shannon, always a pleasure to see you. Welcome. 
Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, it's great to see everybody as always. I'm up here in beautiful God's country, Calaveras County, taking care of a few school districts, but I will be available at five minutes after this call. Uh, Tuesday Notary Titan, five minutes after we'll be doing a quick Zoom. We'll talk about how you can protect and grow your business. Also, how you can diversify your income. I saw a lot of conversation on the chat in regard to diversification. And as Bill knows, Laura knows, and so many people that I work with on here, I've never seen anything that fits more hand in hand with your notary business than what we do. As Bill just mentioned, you are the last line of defense when it comes to identity theft. And I always have to be concerned about the unauthorized practice of law. We will talk about those two subjects. No, Bill is putting in the chat the information for that. You can also text me. I will uh, replay or re-text the text that I sent earlier. But please join me at five minutes after the hour. And we'll talk about how you can diversify and how you can protect and grow your business. And we'll talk about the promotion. That's to remind me to talk on TNT. The promotion uh, uh, that is ending uh, at the end of this month. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So uh, great to see everybody. Look forward to seeing many of you a few minutes after TNT. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. I can't tell you how valuable the uh, Legal Shield uh, membership has been for me and my business. I have used it so many times for interesting topics. So very appreciative of that. Rosie, great to see you. I know you're in New Jersey. How can we help today? <laughs> Hey, Bill, how are you? How's everyone? So um, the mutual prospecting, I, I, the first call person that, that asked the question, um, then I, I put my hand down because I'm like, okay, we'll talk about that later. But um, BNI, I'm a, I am a member of that group because of you, Bill, because it was in your book. And, you know, I went to the meeting and told them, they were like, well, how did you hear about us? I'm like, well, from this book I read, Sign and Thrive. They were like, what? We were mentioned? I'm like, yeah. And so is so is the mutual prospect, is that something I can share with my fellow BNI members? Is that, I think we're on delay. I think I'm, my, my system is slow for whatever reason. Yeah, it is. You're muted, Bill. I have put myself on mute, so. <laughs> or oh. Matt probably muted me. To shut oh. up already, Bill. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so first, Rosie, super glad you're even thinking about this. So um, <clears throat> there's a couple of answers that I'm going to give you. Okay. With the mutual prospecting opportunity, picture what, what I've essentially done is I've taken somebody in my network, Premier Estate Planning, and I introduced them to you, and now they are in your network. So as you establish a relationship and you want to introduce them to people in your network, you can do quite frankly anything you want to do, right? If you enjoy working with Stephanie and Mike, introduce them to whoever you want to, if it brings value to your network. Now, I would, in my experience, and what I would recommend is that you keep these relationships on the personal and authentic level, right? This is um, somebody in your network says, Hey, I'm looking for this. Don't worry. I got a, I, I got a guy or I got a girl. I got a, I got a company. I got a firm that can help you out. Right. Whatever fits your personality and your brand, you've got them that you can make that personal introduction to. What I'll also say is that in B and I, if it's a successful group, which I'm sure it is, since you joined uh -huh. it, right. They probably have an estate planning attorney. And so that estate planning oh. attorney. What? They don't. We don't. Oh, somebody has dropped the ball. On the that. attorney left. He left, oh, a, he left. A, a month or so ago. Yes. I'll have one soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll have one soon. So, yeah. So I think that's a perfect fit, especially if there's people that uh, might need that or they might need a referral source from that. They can work in tandem with you on that one. So even, and this is for everybody too, right? Rosie asked a great question, but this is going to apply to all your networking meetings. There are probably attorneys in that group. So even if you chose not to use Premier as the referral source and the mutual prospecting, we've taught you in the certified notary trust delivery class, what's possible with this. We're showing you what's possible by introducing you to Premier with a $750 revenue opportunity per referral, right? Oh, okay. now you can take that 
and you could apply it to your own valued relationships. You might already have estate planning attorneys that send you work. But what if you started sending them work? What if you sat down and said, hey, I want to send some more customers. Can we brainstorm this? What do you think about webinars? What do you think about seminars in person? How can I participate? Can I invite people to those? Can we work out a win-win situation with that? It just opens up doors of possibility. So even if it's not with Premier, you now have the kernel of seed. You have the seeds to plant something with any type of relationship that you have. Okay, so you knew what I was talking about because I used the wrong word. I said mutual prospecting. It was Premier. But I'm hoping to have my six siblings on there tomorrow night. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. And Rosie, you use the exact right terms. It's mutual prospecting. Oh, okay. That's yes. oh, okay. It is. Yep, but absolutely. The name, you of the, it. the name of the company is Premier. Yeah, Premier is Estate Planning. And it's a mutual Premier. prospecting opportunity with them. Okay, great. Thanks. You got it. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Gia, great to see you up. Come on up. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to go back off camera again. No problem. So, um, I wanted to ask um, two questions again. I had a situation where um, I'm feeling very discouraged. Um, so I got into the notary, uh, the loan signing 2021. I'm in California and um, I pour everything into it and doing great. Um, and with bank serve, I had great, 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 great rating right? Anyway, situation last week where I did a, um, a refinance was for commercial, was a commercial loan or whatever. And um, uh, the next day I got a correspondence from one of the title reps. Uh, she said that my stamp was a little blurry on the um, deed of trust. And she sent me a copy of it and the, one of the numbers was blurry. So she wanted me to provide a loose certificate, stamp a loose certificate and send it, okay? It's going back to Oregon. <clears throat> so I explained to her that um, what I could do, which was redo the deed of trust, right. the notarization, or talk to the NNA and they said, what you could do is take the packet, they could send you the deed of trust, you could go in front of the signer and say, you know, do a verbal confirmation that he did sign that deed of trust and provide a new notary certificate, right? With the date that I went back and saw the signer, they would have to sign my book again. Okay. Okay. So I presented that to the title person and she's just going nuts, right? So I, Back, NNA is like, that's all you can do legally in California. Mm -hmm. Well, Bank Serve gets involved uh, and they basically asked me to do something illegal, which I was, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so floored. I don't even know if I want to do long signings again. I'm floored. Mm -hmm. um, I stood my ground and explained what I could do to fix the situation. Now, I have a very high rating. I had one with them before this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I tried to do everything within my power to fix that situation, but they still wanted the illegal route. Mm -hmm. Even after I sent all the correspondence saying, this is what I can do legally, all of, they still wanted that. I am just floored. So um, I haven't gotten any more signings from them. And I, I don't even know if I'm going to get any more signings from them. I'm still active, um, but I, I, I'm just at a loss for words. And super discouraged. And then I have another question once um, you get you all's feedback on this. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for bringing this to the table for sure. And even more than that, thank you for uh, standing in integrity, uh, even when it hurts. And it, I mean, there's no way to put, no other way to put it. This sucks. Should mm -hmm. not happen this way. Um, so as disappointed as I am, I'm also super proud of you for doing that. And I think we have oh, some workarounds you. and some advice here, but, you know, I know um, Matt is right here sharing the same state with you too. So Matt, I, I know compliance is such a huge uh, consideration and factor and something you stand your ground on. So I'd love for you to share your perspective of this as well. Yeah, thanks, Bill. And thanks, Gia, for bringing this up because it's such a unique situation in California. 
uh, that we don't have any procedure or any statute for correcting uh, an error on a notarial certificate, even if everything was done perfectly, it's just a blurred stamp. The secretary's guidance is to re-notarize the document. And um, that is frustrating because there are other states that do have procedures in place uh, that the notary can exercise when this happens. But uh, I will say that for California notaries on the, on the call, this is one of the, the top ways that notaries get in trouble in California because this is one of the top ways that the, uh, this is one of the top reasons that the secretary's office is on the lookout for. So, you know, I think that you did everything right. I think that you explained the situation, you backed it up with um, information from a credible source. The only other thing that I could recommend would be to send the um, page from the notary handbook that explains, I think there's a, a note section on one of the pages that explains there is no procedure for correcting a, a notary certificate and the notarization has to be uh, redone. But uh, kudos to you for staying compliant and sticking to your integrity. Uh, you know, as far as the hiring company goes, um, two things. One, they're used to notaries either saying, yeah, I'll do it, or working with notaries in states that work, have procedures to correct notarial certificates. Or the other one is they don't care. They just want to get the work done. It's you on the line, not them. So, you know, you can look at it either way. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, uh, move into the mindset that, you know, this relationship is over. I, I don't think that that's the case. I think that you can continue to work with them and uh, continue to reach out to them and, and, you know, tell them that you are here to do what you can do legally to correct the problem and continue to work with them going forward. But um, you're, you're absolutely right. I understand your frustration. We are stuck between a rock and a hard place in California. But uh, do not give in. Um, if you do, it will lead to trouble down the road. I, I know this for certain. I'm in contact with the um, folks in the um, secretary's office. And like I said, this is a hot button issue for them because many, many years ago, this is how they tracked down a ton of deed fraud. Um, yes. So just, just uh, hang in there. This too shall pass. <laughs> uh, Matt, that's such great advice. And thank you. Thank you. Thank for that. you. And, you know, and I'll take it a little bit further too, right? Because I have found with the universe that if I don't make decisions, the universe makes it for me. And there might be some little part of you, Gia, that's been thinking, oh, I really should start going direct, or maybe I really should be uh, expanding my horizons and getting into the trust or estate planning or um, uh, hospital sign, you know, all those different things that you have such a great opportunity for in California, but you just, you've been sitting well, you had a great relationship with that particular company and you didn't take action. So now some action has been taken and there's almost like this, line drawn in the sand and you've got to decide what you want to do with it and so this might be a jumping off point too this might be the uh the fork in the road and it's it's kind of almost like forcing you to a, a certain direction and only you know what that is inside of you right because you you're the one that knows what's going on inside your head so maybe that's the opportunity that you're faced with today too Thank you. I, I appreciate the feedback. Um, I am faced with that opportunity. So I have some decisions to make. Also, how do you save the chat again? The last three, the little three buttons on the very bottom of the chat window next to the smiley face, at least on my computer. Thank you. And thank you everybody for your encouraging words. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you so much for bringing that topic up. And I'm going to get to John's question here in just a moment, but I also want to say that uh, the uh, social event and learning event of the year, Philly Notary Social, is coming up uh, September 29th to October 1st. 
Uh, they're only accepting reservations until the end of August. So now's the time to make a decision. If you're on the East Coast and it's easy for you to get there, I think this is the type of opportunity you're going or the type of event you'll want to be at for peer events. Uh, we just confirmed that, and I hope it's okay, Judy, if I share, but we've got uh, Premier Estate Planning is going to be there. We've got John Braddock from My Life and Wishes. He's going to be there. I'm going to be there. The topic I'm talking about, uh, and I just told Judy this yesterday, so this is uh, fresh, but it's all about landing the attorney clients. It's all those lessons I learned after talking and marketing to 98 of them. I had 98 conversations with estate planning attorneys, and there's good, the bad, and the ugly that I'll be sharing at that event. If you can make it, it's uh, phillysocial2023.com. I'm going to post the link right here in the chat, the longer link to Judy's website is here for you. So you can book that. Judy, you got one thing that you want to say real quick? You're on mute though. I just want to add one thing. Yeah. That want the chance to wish Bill a happy birthday in person. Oh, then oh yeah. <laughs> must come to because this is Bill's birthday and we're having our closing party is going to be a combination of a closing party at a birthday party. So um, I'm not minimizing. We have so many speakers. Vanessa Terry is going to be there. Griff, the notary is going to be there. We are, we are about a lot of speakers, but we also plan to have a lot of fun and we welcome you all. And especially um, I was looking at Melissa and Rosie. Rosie, I know you're signed up, but Melissa's in New Jersey. And um, this would be a great opportunity for you to meet some and mingle with some of these people. So I'm really excited and thank you, Bill, for mentioning it. Yeah, my pleasure. Looking forward to it. All right, we have time for one last question, John. Welcome back up. Uh, first, happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> thank you. Um, it's coming this, up. And this is not a question. It's just more for Gia's dilemma. And this is wishful thinking. And my question is to Matt. Matt. Can this scenario exist? I already know your answer, I think. You offer, this is just to salvage the relationship. You offer title um, to pay for them to overnight you the document. You take the document back to the signer and you stamp the correct way. You don't change the document. You don't make another cert. You just stamp it correctly and then you overnight it back to them. No, that's considered changing it. No, you're, that's backdating. That's illegal. Even if you're just stamping? It's a new notarization, has to be done completely from scratch. There are no exceptions. Okay, thank you. Great clarifier. Great way to end the call right on time, John. Well played. Matt Miller from California League of Independent Notaries, thank you so much for your help and perspective today. Truly appreciate you. You want to say anything to say farewell this week? Well, I just want to thank everyone for stopping by. Appreciate all of the uh, participation today and look forward to seeing you again next week. All right. Awesome. And thank you all for showing up and growing yourself and your business on the Tuesday. We'll see you same time, same place next week, every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Bye-bye.